So, you wanna play the green boys? Wanna smack up the Yumis and Stunties and all them gits and lead the war? But what's this here? Strategies? Orcs don't need no strategy. Whoa, whoa there, Grimgore. You're gonna need some help if you're gonna make all your green boys the strongest here. And just how's a puny Yumi like you gonna help the greatest orc ever? I'm glad you asked, Grimgore, cause I ain't no regular human. I'm Colonel Strat, the strategy extraordinaire, and I'm here to show you and all these lovely green boys watching how to dominate as the big green meanies, the orcs. Now first we look at the campaign map. Now the orcs have quite a few mechanics to hand handle after their update. You better not waste me time, Yumi. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Just let me teach these gits watching for you then, okay? Is that alright with you, Grimgore? Sure. I got stunties to stomp. Okay, now that he's gone, we can get into the meat of the orc's mechanics. So, we first look at the tech tree. Let's go away, Grimgore. For, for the orcs, it's actually very well detailed and impressive. You know, for a bunch of overgrown fungus monsters. But the orcs can get a lot of buffs to these units. Income and growth from from their tree as well as scrap. Now I may hear you say, what's scrap, Colonel? Scrap's what makes the boys out of you, git! Don't shout at the lovely people, it was a good question, Grimgore. Scrap trap fans is a currency, a unique currency for the orcs that allows them to upgrade their units with random buffs, stat bonuses, or unique traits to make them better in the long run. Think of it as an extra bonus to the unit level and tier, and these can actually make a tier 2 unit meaning like make, make it feel like a tier 3 unit. So they are indeed powerful and wise to use as much as possible. That's right, you get. It makes you harder and smarter. I don't know about that last one, but correct on the first point there, Grimgore. Now to continue, the orcs buildings are nothing special and hold territory but you know they don't benefit from a lot of trade and their settlements don't 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 really set them apart from other factions you know they have their basic buildings you know they're um they're like boar pens you know their unit recruitment buildings some special buildings you know some income buildings and you know defensive buildings but they don't have anything special or make a lot of money um which you know, doesn't set them apart from other factions, but what does set them apart is their WA mechanic, which is, I have to say, probably their best mechanic. Oh yeah, he getting to the WA, boys! That's right, Grimgore. The long-awaited WA mechanic rework was not only a breath of fresh air to the Greenskins, but also a great change, and it makes the Greenskins incredibly fun to play, in my opinion. How it works is, take a look at the top of the screen here, See, you can you can see this level of reputation. What is reputation? It's like a scale of your relationship with other orc clans. Like, for instance, you smack up a, a tough enemy, or or orc clans are going to respect you more. Um, and then more of them get called to your wa, the higher your reputation is. So, but once you reach a hundred here, you can call a wa. Reputation rises from fighting battles, raising settlements, or taking out factions. It's real easy to build up. 
and you can sit on it for a while because your faction does get buffs well at max reputation. Like right here, growth, control, um, winds of magic and leadership. But you, it is, it, you, you do have benefits to calling a wah because you'll get a trophy. And you can get a trophy depending on what type of level settlement you have. So if it's a high tier settlement, you can get a really good trophy and you get d different trophies depending on what, like what race it is. It could be a buff for your armies, an income, or even something like physical resistance. But the lower the number is, the better the trophy. You gotta go for the biggest one you get. That's right, Grimgore. The bigger the trophy, the greater the buff. One thing to know is that you can only have one trophy active at a time. So it's wise not to replace a trophy that's good with a bad one just to get another wah off. There are a little drawbacks to waiting on a wah though. After a while your boys will get a bit antsy. Anyway, a wah being called is a big deal for the orcs. They call up everyone and their cat for a wah. Nah, the boys don't like cats. The fur gets into paws they do. Well geez Grimgore, didn't know you were allergic to cats. Anyway, a wah being called summons a second army that attaches to your main army and, it, and gains extra orc units to it based on the level of the trophy you're going for. How big your army is and, so, and other factors such as if you have a 20 stack, you can get an extra 20, 20 spawn, but if you don't have 20, you can only have the max amount in your, in your wah army that you had in the parent army when it was called. Does that make sense? Basically, if you don't fully stack out a 20 stack, you're only ever going to get that amount. So if you start with 10 and you call a wah, you're only going to get a wild army with a max unit count as 10. But you get new units every turn, as you get closer to your wild target. Use talks too much, Hubie. When we get into the fighting? Well, you're in luck, my big green friend. As that covers the campaign mechanics, and we're off to, to the army tier compositions for these lovely green sausages here. Finally! Alright, settle down now, you big green bastard. And let's get into a tier 1 army composition. Alrighty, Strat fans, here we are with a Tier 1 Greaseguns Force. Now, for my main line, I started with some Orc boys. Kind of basic, but they uh, they get the job done, and they're very, they're very, very um, decent for a Tier 1 unit. For my main, for my back line, I got some Goblin Archers again. Very basic, but um, they're expendable, which means that when they route, it won't affect the other units. So that, that helps, and then they do have a decent range of missile strength to start. For the sides, for the calf, I have I got some forest goblin spider riders, which compared to them and the forest goblins, um, well the the regular goblin uh, wolf riders, these ones do better because of their poison attacks and their shields, um, and they have and they are faster. Now that leads us to the big old green man himself. Oi! Hurry up, will ya? I needs to get to chopping! Well, first, just let me introduce the, your friends next to your first Grimgore. So I've added a Black Orc Big Boss hero for a little extra damage alongside Grimgore, as well as, as, well as an Orc Shaman with access to the Big Wall for a little magic support. Now, let's get into fighting. That's what I'm talking about! Alright, so first things go. first. We gotta get up over this hill. Send our goblin riders around here. Can't, can't forget the big old, the big old green boy himself. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. Let's keep him going. Target charge. Gobbos. Running. The war is here. Boys. Going in the war. The Attack. The fight. Time for slaughtering. Slaughter. Slaughter. Gonna kill him. Gonna kill him. Gonna kill him! Stick him! Let's fight! Fight! Yep. Uh, Mr. Gork. Uh, 
Brain buster. Activate our Wa ability. It increases our damage, melee attack, and makes us immune to psychology. It really helps us. Let's get our goblin heart. Our goblin. Uh, say my name. Say my name. Say my name. I'm say it. Stop him. Check out my weapon. Killing time! Not a problem! Chopper's ready! <laughs> Goblin! Gonna kill him! Stop him! You sure? And the more Doing you it. get into melee combat, the, uh, the better it is because you, you charge up your wall points by being in melee combat. Grimdor. See Grimgor. Get him. Come on, Grimgor. Swing your axe. Oh, yeah. Sweet blood. Now. Boys. Get him, boys. Goblins. We is better than them. Alrighty, with that strap fans, let's upgrade and the boys to a tier 2 and we'll be right back. Alrighty, with that strap fans, we're back. Here with a tier 2 army, now I've upgraded our orc boys to savage orc biggins. Oi! What happened to me regular biggins I told you to get? Well, Grimgor, orc biggins aren't as good as savage orcs. For one, they lose their shield and face and... And when facing a missile heavy faction, which the orcs usually do, I never use biggins as they get destroyed before they reach the lines. Savage orcs, however, have a physical resistance buff, about 25%, that helps them resist the missile fire because majority you'll be facing will be non-magic based missile, missile damage. Now physical resist is a plus. Though they have no armor compared to the regular biggins, their physical resist buff is massive and lets them outclass them regardless of their armor. Oh! Well, as long as they fight good! Oh, I assure you, Grimgor, they do. So, they show up our front line, taking place of the Orc Boys, that add a lo lot more damage and weapon strength as well as Frenzy. Come on. Come on. Show me. Alright, there's Frenzy, which, you know, increases their damage already once we start the battle. And then for our back line, we've replaced, we've reduced those goblin archers to just four error boys, which aren't as big of an upgrade, but they're big enough. Um, they add enough extra damage to really make the, you know, make it. Even though they still are considered a tier one infantry because they aren't as good, they have a lot more durability than goblins, so they'll stay alive longer. For our our cavalry, we've really upgraded and gotten some boar boys. Now, the Boar Boys are very good. They're armor-piercing. They're shielded, heavily armored. Um, Anti-infantry, they're really good. Um, even though they don't have a lot of special abilities when they just start off at Tier 2, they're really, really good. And then um, we, of course, have our our Shaman. He has full access to his spells. The Orc Boar, oh, Black Orc Big Boss as Ana Boar now. And has, you know, his uh, his damaging abilities. And Grimgor has Gitsnick. And his uh, his abilities as well, and for just for good measure, we've added some artillery, a goblin rock lobber, which isn't the best, but as far as orc units for for missile units, they're really really good. Again, expendable and siege attacker. Um, they can't run, can barely move, but they have a long range, so it makes up for it. All right, you big green gits, let's get them. Now you're speaking my language, Yubi. Alright, we're facing a Bretonian faction. Send them right in. And then we have, have four boys on the side. Gonna hunt down. They have some artillery too. Let's get 
these biggins in to charge the line. Here we go! Ready! Bless him! 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 Got it! Simon! Oh, Bonsha! Brown boys! What you want? Get the boy boys to ca attack the enemy cavalry. Sorry, boy, no! Pop all of his little downs. Do that. Headbutt. this. Oh, yeah, that's good. Ready, boys. Do it. Run, boys. Move and fast. Where's the scrap? Here we go. Come on, then. Oh, boys. Run, boys. Let's have it. Get our all right. Please go by that attack there. Four boys. I'm ready. Gaze of Gork. Oh, it's a nice missile. to tier three gets and here we are with finally with tier three now this army composition is grimgore's favorite you bet your you be but it is <laughs> i knew it you big green meanie now for this build the reason why he's so happy is because we got ourselves some black orcs now grimgore is by lord the biggest black orc out there so of course he buffs up these boys the best and they are the best. They're a tier 3 unit with 110 armor, a whole heap of weapon strength, charge bonus, immune to psychology, the, the works. They're really good. They're really good in melee. They just are a bit slow. Um, so again, they do suffer against range factions. And we're, up, we're going up against the Stunties here, the uh, Orcs' true nemesis. Now, um, for our missile line, we've done away with archers entirely because the orcs don't really bring much of them into the end game. But what they do have, and what we we've brought to the table, are Doom Diver catapults. Now these, this this cheeky unit, straps a goblin, screaming, and flings him at the enemy. <laughs> Somehow that does a lot of damage, so it's really good. Even though it's only a tier two, it works really well. And I've brought two of them. For our cavalry, we've upgraded to Savage Orc Boy Biggins with one. 
being regular biggins, but they're they're a regiment of renown version. Um, I usually try to get these during the campaign because they're really good. Um, they have a lot of armor piercing, and of course they do have a lot of uh, they have frenzy. And the Where's savage orcs yeah. one have that physical resist buff. Now, if you own D the DLC for the Warden and the Paunch, you can bring yourself a Rogue Idol, which really, really is good. 150 armor, almost like they're unbreakable. They do missile damage and anti-infantry armor piercing damage. They're really good. They're just cumbersome. Uh, but yeah, um, it it'll do like, it it's pretty much just a big old green behemoth. Um, but if you don't, then two Arachnorok Spiders are just as good, with a good um, amount of missile strength, weapon strength, as well as the poison damage. Um, and these both are Regiment of Renown versions, so they do have a little bit of an extra buff, but they're not, it's not buffed up by that much. So this one has the Maternal Instincts, which summons units of Spider Hatchlings. I think it's whenever she gets, uh, range, oh it's a, oh yeah, it's a summon. So they can summon spider hatchlings. And then of course if you have the DLC, we do have some stone trolls. If not, regular trolls are just as good. But the stone, tro stone trolls, if you have the DLC, is a whole lot better. They have a lot more weapon strength, a lot more armor, and they have a better leadership buff, buff than regular trolls. Because the regular trolls have a low leadership, so they route pretty far, pretty fast. They still have a low leadership overall, but 56 is a lot better than the regular trolls 30. Um, and then, of course, we have Gringor himself with all of his abilities, and uh, we've upgraded the Orc Shaman onto a Boar Boy. Now let's get stuck in and show how these boys fight. Alright, so first, we're going to have to charge as fast as possible to the enemy lines. The cab's not going to do much except for just you know, have to go after, after the sides. But we are going to want to run down the enemy archers as fast as possible. Because that's going to be the big problem. Alright, so... Um, I'm going to pick targets. Don't watch ya! Thanks, gonna line their slayers up, huh? That's not a good idea. Talk Haven't you seen my slowly. dwarf guide? Shifting! Bastion! Where is the scrap? Get him! right there. Send him in. Let's get them out of there. Gonna cast spells. Take some finessing to get this done. Ready for war! War boss down fire! Spot those spider hatchlings. Once we get into the scrap. The enemy. Let's go! Yeah, I think we got this. Let's pop Gringor's stuff. This battle needs a war! Get a wall popped. There we go. 
We are taking some some casualties, but we're able to cut through their armor really fast. Grimgore himself really does carry. Say my name! Say it! Do a brain buster here. He's a fork. Those guys. Just the uh, slayers, I believe. And the slayers. Come on, let's get Grimgore in there. Kill him. Yes, chop him up, boys. Yeah. Popped his head off. Clean off, you bitch. Oh, jeez. Oh, here comes the trolls. That's the stunty scrapped. That concludes our army composition, strap fans. Oh, the fighting's over! For now, Grimgore. For now. So now you have the tools, big green boy, to be the biggest and meanest orc boss around. So, what will you conquer? Who will you smash first? How big's your wall gonna be? Excellent question, Grimgore. And with that, strap fans, you have all the tools needed to stomp as the greenskins. And I wish you the best of luck in your green tide of destruction. Remember, if you like these guides and want to see me cover more strats, continue to stomp that like button, smash in the co in your comments, and crump that subscribe button. Thank you, Grimgore. And with that, keep it strategic, strat fans. Colonel out. See you's gets on the battlefield. <laughs>